<laughs> Enjoying horror games doesn't have a specific time or month, and after the huge increase in horror game releases in the last decade, we pretty much have something to play every freaking day. With that being said, there's no question that horror games in October specifically become much more relevant and sometimes even scarier because your mind loves to receive some spooks in the current atmosphere. But even though the options we can play are so many and diverse, I believe there are certain titles that stand out and deserve to be on the front lines. Long story short, it's time for me to help you decide which horror games you should focus on at this time and why you might want to give them a chance if you haven't played them already. This list will be a combination of new titles that have recently come out and also older titles that have been around for a while but still have a very strong presence in the genre and are known for their infamous legacy. So without further ado, let's start. If you are a fan of Alien Isolation, then allow me to tell you that there's a new game made specifically for someone like you, because this experience is all what you're asking for. It's a video game adaptation inspired by a suspenseful film series with the same name, but it adds some really cool features along the way. The story is set in a world where humanity is hunted by sound-sensitive creatures, and when I say sound-sensitive, I mean that they can literally hear every noise you make. You take on the role of a young woman survivor navigating this terrifying landscape, grappling not only with external threats, but also internal and familial disputes, which add emotional touch to your experience and make it feel more realistic. But regardless if you love the story or not, the stealth challenge here is seriously something to test your skills, because you basically need to avoid making noise everywhere, including in real life. Because, keep in mind, there's also microphone noise detection features here, and the monsters can hear any sound in your room if your microphone is working. So if you live in a loud area and you want to spook yourself out, this is a game to play at night with your microphone, my friend. Speaking of cool games to play, I think it's time to tell you about our sponsor. Now you guys know very well that we don't usually have promotions on our videos because we only want relevant stuff that's interesting to you. And this is exactly why I wanted to include this one. As we all know, Dying Light 2 is among the most epic zombie experiences that you can go through these days. But what some of you might not know is the new Tower Raid mode in the game. Tower Raid is a new co-op roguelike experience added to the game, and it's inspired by the VNC Tower mission in Dying Light 2. Players can team up to ascend a tower with many floors of randomized enemies, traps and surprises. Each floor presents new obstacles and a final boss encounter with valuable rewards awaiting those who reach the top. It's basically a cool competitive concept of completing bounties, collecting currencies, and eventually getting yourself new perks and rewards. And by the way, the currencies you receive here are basically candies to match the Halloween atmosphere. Only the bravest of all can survive the Halloween run. And since Halloween is the best time for such an experience, Dying Light 2 and Tower Raid come in a special vibe for you, with the game being 60% off on Steam until November 6. So at less than half the price, you can enjoy one of the most exciting journeys in the zombie world, with parkour, action and multiplayer challenges keeping you engaged all the time. And if you're someone who's a big fan of the Dying Light universe in general, then keep in mind that a new standalone installment is coming soon, and it's called Dying Light the Beast. So make sure you keep it on your wish list, and also don't forget the 60% off deal on Dying Light 2. This is a great time to get the game at the best price possible. Anyway, back to the video. <laughs> <laughs> A 
As you all know, I personally have a weakness for Asian horror games for some reason. And as soon as I saw the name of this game on Steam, I had to add it to this video. This game is from Vietnam, and it puts you in a haunting experience inspired by Vietnamese folklore and urban legends, taking place in 1990 Saigon, which is a popular real city in the country. The protagonist here is tormented by strange events and paranormal encounters that feel very personal, but you still cannot understand them at first. As a result, you must solve puzzles and explore eerie environments to uncover dark secrets connected to local mythology and spiritual beliefs. And just like every psychological game, the gameplay here emphasizes first-person exploration and psychological horror, relying heavily on atmosphere, sound design, and suspenseful storytelling. The story mainly reflects a blend of ordinary Vietnamese culture and straight-up horror, with elements that address the protagonist's own fears, memories, and trauma. This is why I love Asian horror, by the way. They always succeed in mixing the ordinary with scary vibes without making it obvious, which makes everything seem even more real. Hellseed stands out as one of the most underappreciated indie horror games in the past decade, with its potential largely overshadowed by technical challenges rather than any creative shortcomings. The story takes place in 1980s Italy, and it follows a detective named Lucio Toscani, who is investigating the mysterious disappearance of psychiatrist Angelo De Santis. Toscani's investigation takes him to the doctor's home, where he encounters strange entities and paranormal events that grow increasingly disturbing. And trust me, there's basically something happening in this game every few seconds. Whether it's doors closing on their own, water taps running, or lamps falling, you literally can't walk without hearing or seeing something that makes no sense. Beside that, don't assume unraveling this mystery to be easy. You'll need to uncover numerous clues and piece them together to realize that DeSantis may be stuck in a darker, deeper plot related to his past and the sinister forces surrounding him. So in my opinion, if you really want to go through a sophisticated investigation filled with actual scary paranormal events in a visually detailed environment, this is a game to keep in mind for sure. Hey, did you hear me? I said... Some of you might be surprised by seeing this game on this list, but I'm really among the people who think it deserves another chance. In fact, every one of us on the channel agrees on this, and that's why I believe you should have it on your mind these days. The story here starts in a simple way. You are Murphy Pendleton, a supposed criminal whose prison transport bus crashes near the eerie town of Silent Hill. Struggling with his own past and trauma, Murphy finds himself in a surreal, nightmarish version of the town, 
which is a usual part of every Silent Hill game. But the difference with Downpour is that it basically gives you more liberty to explore the place. And you might have a hard time finding what you're looking for. For some people, this is a downside because you can really reach a point where investigation becomes frustrating. But for people who love spooky atmospheres like me, I enjoy navigating every location here. Speaking of atmosphere, Downpour has one of the chilliest versions of Silent Hill, and also the most mysterious. You can meet people who don't really have a huge impact on the story, but they still make you curious to know about their history. A big example of such case is the anonymous mailman who shows up from nowhere and speaks with you in a very nice and comforting manner. But for some reason, you can feel he's not real or there's something suspicious about him. Now who said anything about trouble? Just trying to be helpful, son. Name's Howard, by the way. Murphy. In other words, guys, there's plenty of stuff going on in this game and the story is relatively tragic with multiple endings that range from extreme sadness to pure redemption. So if you have some free time during this season, keep this one among your options, and you can play it smoothly on the PS3 emulator even if you don't have a console. Charlie, I'm sorry. So sorry. If you are among the people who saw countless videos about the infamous PT all over the internet but never played it before its cancellation, then this is something specifically for you. Unreal PT is a fan-made version of Silent Hill's demo. But what makes it special is that it's basically the closest thing possible to the source material, both visually and atmosphere-wise. As usual, you find yourself in a haunting, endlessly looping corridor where you must uncover a series of increasingly disturbing clues to escape. Every time you go through the corridor, you learn something new and the atmosphere escalates more and more. The radio also explains to you how the narrative revolves around a disturbing family tragedy of a man who killed his wife and kids. <coughs> the woman was shot in her right eye, and she was pregnant during the crime, and that's why you can see an unborn baby in the bathroom sink. The narrative becomes even more complex with each loop, with the ghost of the wife Lisa haunting the hallways, stalking and terrifying you everywhere. <laughs> and by the way, when I say everywhere, I literally mean everywhere, because later it was revealed that Lisa actually follows you the entire game and sees you all the time even when you don't see her. Anyway, I don't want to explain more details here. If you want to play the game yourself, you can download it from Itch.io. Just search for Unreal PT and you'll find it. In order for this list to seem more diverse, we need to add some Lovecraftian horror along with the psychological horror. And that's why Call of Cthulhu is the best option for this. This game came out in 2018 and the story centers around Edward Pierce, a troubled private investigator who is sent to Darkwater Island to investigate a series of mysterious deaths among the Hawkins family. 
However, Pierce's investigation eventually leads him into a world of cults, madness, and nightmarish creatures where people are not really as they seem. The game is heavily narrative driven and emphasizes exploration, dialogue choices, and stealth rather than combat. Furthermore, Pierce's mental health plays a central role and the sanity system impacts how he perceives reality, leading to hallucinations, paranoia, and potential alternative paths through the story. This is actually why we mentioned this game multiple times in videos about mental asylums, because it has a section showcasing a very distressing mental hospital. So if this suits your taste, then this is really an amazing experience for a spooky night these days. Well, here we are, Hawkins Mansion. The discovery of the body of the man who currently owns the manor house, Dwight Shaw, and it was completely decomposed while several witnesses assured that he was still alive to be the residents of the village, brought back to mind the strange disappearance of eight teenagers three years ago. This is honestly a hidden gem on multiple levels, and I feel like it's not well known enough compared to similar titles with the same formula. The game's initial name was The Conjuring House but they changed it due to a legal issue regarding copyright. But similar to the movies, here you also take on the role of a paranormal investigator stuck in a mansion infested with vengeful spirits and mysterious dark forces. Hello? Is anybody there? This haunted mansion belongs to the infamous Atkinson family. And your main goal is to survive by exploring, uncovering the mansion's secrets, and eventually attempting to escape. Robert! Robert, is that you? The game leans heavily into horror, with crazy sound design, chilling visuals, and limited resources that contribute to a sense of vulnerability. The puzzles can also be challenging at times, but in my opinion, the scariest thing here is the mansion's design itself. The details are very uncanny, and you can also get a sense that you're not safe in any of its corners. Something really evil happened here, and you need to deal with the consequences that you signed up for. Hey man, what are you doing? Hey! Move away from the body now! Another surprising choice on my list is a game that I'm pretty sure no one played except me and random six people somewhere on our planet. This game has caught my eye since the second I saw its trailer back in 2013 due to its insanely unique concept. The story takes place in Salem, Massachusetts, which is a real place as many of you know, and the protagonist is a detective named Ronan O'Connor. The catch, however, is that Ronan was murdered at the beginning of the game, and you can only play with him as a ghost. Ronan's mission in the entire game is to solve the mystery of his own murder, to bring justice and find peace. But the problem is that his target is much more complex than he thought. Initially, he was pursuing a famous serial killer known as the Bell Killer, but it will eventually lead him to a mysterious girl who is very, very evil. But what's even more enticing about her is that she's literally a real person from history. And she is playing the role of Abigail Williams, the notorious girl who caused the Salem witch trials in 1692. Abigail was an accuser who falsely accused dozens of witchcraft, which led many of them to lose their lives after so many crazy trials in the justice system. Her actions in court were dramatic and intense, playing a crucial role in convincing the judges that witchcraft is rampant in Salem, Massachusetts, which sadly pushed the court to execute many innocent people. Anyway, if this journey seems like something you would enjoy, then this is a game that really deserves attention. It has many flaws, but I still believe the concept is very special. 
Hey, hey. How the hell did it come back? Did I do that? Hey, hey! Come back! Those notes aren't for you. Before you underestimate this game, let me tell you that it's probably the scariest one on the list, even though it doesn't seem intense at first. This game is inspired heavily by Silent Hill, and it puts you in a haunting first-person experience as you navigate dark, claustrophobic environments to find your lost service dog. The story begins when the dog is lost down a drain during a rainstorm, and because the protagonist has a strong bond with his dog, he ventures into the labyrinthine sewer system, descending deeper into strange, nightmarish realms. But as you progress, you start to realize that the game explores themes of isolation, fear, and mental health, especially phobias and anxiety, by immersing you in a world that can't stop shifting. The enemies here are very disturbing. The landscapes are bizarre, and the soundtrack keeps getting more and more creepy. In other words, you basically feel like you're inside a nightmare, and what you're seeing is a manifestation of your hallucinations, or maybe your fears. What makes Lost in Vivo stand out is its ability to induce fear through atmosphere rather than jump scares, and it makes you reach a point where you start questioning if this whole place is real, or if everything is in your mind. So if you're a Silent Hill fan looking for a similar creepy experience to play these nights, Lost in Vivo is a great option, my friend. This is a final addition to the list, because it's basically the cherry on the cake, and it fits the current atmosphere perfectly. This fan-made Halloween game has been lauded for its authentic recreation of the original experience, and it allows you to relive the horror of being hunted by the one and only Michael Myers. The gameplay includes sneaking, hiding, and trying to escape from Myers, who stalks relentlessly with the same terrifying calm as in the films. So if you want to lose a few years from your lifespan, then remember to get this game for free on Itch.io. Another game I should probably remind you of is the most obvious one, Silent Hill 2 Remake. We already talked about it a million times on the channel, but I thought I should give it an honorable mention here too. The game incredibly recreates the chilling atmosphere of the original and goes even further by making Silent Hill Town feel more alive than ever. The characters here are insanely detailed, and their emotional traumas can be seen in a clearer way due to the visual enhancement in their facial features and animations. But for me, the atmosphere and the weather here remain my favorite parts of the whole experience. I mentioned before that I'm obsessed with playing horror games during the cold, cloudy seasons, because it makes me feel the isolation that I'm feeling inside the game. Anyway guys, this is all for today. Don't forget the 60% discount in Dying Light 2 because it's really a high quality game and the tower raid mode looks like so much fun. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time.